Hi, and welcome to my C-Shop Web Driver video series. In this video, we're just going to pick up where we left off and have a little further look at finding elements on a web page. So I'm just going to quickly navigate to our Java test site and just recap what we did. So all we did was we went to the contact page and we filled in a few fields and that was pretty much it. Today we're just going to move on from that and take a deeper look at some other options that we have available to us. So before we do that, let's just make sure this test runs without any issues. Okay, looks like it's worked without any issues. So what we will discuss in this particular video is again continuing to work on this contact page. We're going to take a look at three other ways to find an element. We're going to briefly discuss the first two and go into a little bit detail on the third one. So the first is this concept of using something called XPath and a similar concept using something called CSS. So what is XPath and what is CSS? XPath is to keep this explanation really short, it's just a quick shortcut to the HTML source of an element. It just provides a very hierarchical link to an element on the page by looking at where the code for that element sits on the HTML page source. CSS works in a similar manner in that as opposed to looking at where the element sits on a page, for the source, so if we just look at the page source, XPath is used to quickly navigate to a very particular or rather a very specific line based on hierarchy, based on certain things like class, uh, ID, to be more specific based on the attributes used in a HTML tag. CSS has a similar approach but it is more style orientated. What that means is it uses certain things like class, certain things which are decorated as far as the HTML page is concerned and uses that to get to it. So with CSS, we also have the option to use certain things like ID and class. So, so XPath and CSS are actually a very, not complicated, but they certainly are a big topic and actually deserve to have both topics covered in their own respective videos and I'll do that in the future but for the moment I wanted to show you a basic and quick way of using those two finders so let's go ahead and do that so the blueprint for it is very similar to using something like ID tag name and name in fact it's pretty much identical it's driver dot find element by and here you have the option of using something like CSS selector and XPath. So we'll go with CSS selector for the moment. And this is where we would need to pass in a CSS expression. So for the moment, we're just going to put double quotes, close it. So let's go ahead and find an element to use as part of our CSS selector find statement. So we haven't worked with or rather we haven't touched a couple of elements on this page in particular let's just look at these buttons here so we've got three radio buttons and two checkboxes so let's just right click on the email newsletter checklist and inspect this so we can see it's got a few things it's got ID type value and name so let's go ahead and try and use the ID so the way CSS works is essentially similar to how something like ID would work is it tries to find something based on an expression that we pass it so like I said I'm gonna go into CSS selectors in a lot more detail in a future video but for the moment a really common way of using CSS selectors is to use something like ID and to use an ID as part of a CSS expression we need to pass in the hashes the hash symbol which represents 
the following value after the hash symbol will be an ID. So anything we put after this is effectively the value of the ID. So if I were to put something like this, for instance, this hash contact underscore link is the equivalent of saying ID contact underscore link. So obviously we won't do this because what we're trying to do in this instance is click on the checkbox. We are just going to inspect that again and we're going to get the value of this ID here and put that in there. And since it's a checkbox, what we want to do is click on it. Now we're going to do a similar thing using XBAR. And in fact, we'll use XBAR on the other checkbox. So what is the ID value of the other checkbox? It's C D O N A. So let's go ahead and do that. So XBAR also allows you to identify things like ID. So in this case, to do that, all we're going to say is ID, open brackets, single quotes, paste the value in there, single quotes, close bracket. So this is now effectively using the CSS selector find element method and the XBAR find element method to go ahead and find an element using these locators. So through my last video and this video, we've now covered a good selection of these fine element locators we can use. But there is another one, a slightly more complex one, and it's called the find elements method. So what is the difference between find element and find elements? Well, first of all find element returns a single web element or if you want it to be a bit more specific in code we can say we can say we can say this this returns a single element hence find element. This however returns either 0, 1 or more than one element or to be more specific it either returns 0 or more than 0 elements. So what is another significant difference between the two? Well driver.find element can actually end up finding you more than one element but it will only return the first one that it finds. So for instance Let's just say we said something like this. Because we've used find element, this will basically try and find any HTML on the page which is of type anchor tag. If you don't know what an anchor tag is, it's basically a link. So if we were to inspect this, this is a link, as is the about link, as is the adoption and the home link. Various other links also exist like terms and the testroom.com. So what this will do is this will return the first anchor link that it finds. Now, in some situations, that might be what you're doing. That might be the valid thing to do. But in other situations, you might need to have every single element that is of a particular category or group returned to you in one go. And at the moment, this cannot cater for that situation. This can't satisfy it. So what we have in this place is called find elements. So if we now did this and put this in there, what this now does is this will go off and this will find all the elements it can find on that particular page that match this category here or to use an example it will basically return all of the links in this cell as well as these two links including anything else it finds on the page which matches this category so let's remove that so how is this useful well sometimes we don't have information like IDs 
So sometimes we have nothing. We just have a tag, some text, and the tag ends. There's nothing inside the actual tag itself. So when I say inside, I mean the actual. So when I say inside the tag, I am referring to the arrow brackets. So we have this less than arrow sign, H1, and then greater than arrow sign. Inside this bracket, there is no additional information to identify this particular tag. So in this instance, if we did something like this, H1, this element will go off and return all the tags that it can find which matches H1. So in essence, you will end up getting this. But the side of, a, of this is you might also end up getting other H1 tags that you might not have intended to. For instance, this contact form here, or rather this line of text here. So using something like find elements is a really quick way of trying to obtain access to an element which otherwise would be a little bit more difficult to do using something like driver.findElement. Now naturally to actually satisfy that you can use something like CSS selector or XPath. Sometimes you actually do need to be able to obtain a number of elements in one go. So in this case Let's just say you need to be able to grab all of the links here in one go and then look through the links and then click on something. So to use an example of using find elements, what we will do is we will actually get all of the links on this page and then we're going to try and find the about link and click on it. So to do that, I'm going to change the tag to A and what I need to do is similar to how I did here in that I stored this information in this I web element and called it element. We need to use a similar approach. And the approach we're going to use is first of all, we're going to store the whole thing in a list. And we are going to use generics here to say that the collection of items in this list are all I web elements. And the reference name we're going to give this is links now what we need to do is basically look through this collection here so again just to quickly explain here we only grabbed a single element and we put it in this reference here which is a single element here however we are grabbing multiple elements so we are now putting all of the elements we find in this links i list array so all we're going to do now is basically iterate through the array and once we find the one we're interested in we're going to click on it so to do that we're basically going to use a for each loop and we're going to say for an iWeb element called link in links if link dot uh, text dot equals about link dot click And to avoid getting a null pointer, I'm also going to put in a break here. So what's going to happen is, when this test runs, or rather when this main method runs, after we've done our other steps, it will attempt to click on the email newsletter checkbox, followed by the zoo volunteer checkbox and then try and click on this about link here. And the way it's going to do it is, it's going to use CSS selector to find the single element and click on it. It's then going to use XPath to click on the other checkbox. It will then grab all the elements it can find which matches this criteria here, store them in the list. We are then going to iterate through the list. And once we find 
the link which contains the about text. We're going to try and click on that link and then we're going to break out of the loop. And just to make sure we are not going to quit the driver afterwards. So let's run the test. Ah, okay, so our test has stopped. It looks like it didn't click on the Zoo Volunteer checkbox and it also looks like it didn't click on the About link. So let's quickly go back and see why that might have happened. So the mystery of why it didn't click on the element or rather the Zoo Volunteer checkbox is because we didn't actually ask to click on it. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, the reason why it might not have clicked on the about link is because we've typed in about using capital A and then B O U T in lowercase. But if we look on our web page, we actually use about in uppercase. So we need to match it. If you're wondering why that's the case, when we use something like the equals method, it doesn't just match the characters, it also matches the the case insensitivity between characters. So if we run our test now, it should pass. Okay, fantastic. Looks like this time it did pass. It looked like it did definitely click on both checkboxes and it then clicked on the about link, hence where I were on the about page now. So in this video, in addition to the other locators that we looked at in the previous video, we also looked at CSS selector and XBAR. We did admit that CSS selector and XBAR are two types of locators which deserve their own videos. And I'll do that to give you more information on how to use CSS and XBAR expressions. But for the moment, we at least scratched the surface in trying to understand how they're used. We also then looked at the important find elements method and we looked at the difference between find element and find elements. And we saw how useful find elements can be when we're trying to track down specific types of web elements on a page. And just to polish off the video, we quickly wrote a really basic for each loop to loop through our collection. And when we found an object that we were interested in we just clicked on it and then broke out of the loop to make sure that we didn't get a null point so by the end of this video our understanding of find element and find elements should be more than enough to use both of these methods to be able to find elements with very little problem and that's it for this video thanks for watching hi guys i really appreciate you watching my videos and if you liked it give it a thumbs up if you already haven't, hit the subscribe button below. Also, follow me on Twitter, Facebook and Google. Links in the description below. Until next time, ciao.